In our look at the prologue of the Lord's Prayer, as well as the first three petitions, we've been focusing, and rightly so, on God and our relation to him. Now, in the fourth petition, it is not as though we leave all thoughts of God and turn to self. After all, this is a prayer addressed to God, and our petitions are always directed towards asking him for what we pray. Uh, But the fourth petition turns uh, to the realization that God cares for us holistically. We live for Christ, but Christ cares for us, body and soul. And so it is good and right for us to offer up our desires for the things of this world. And so the fourth petition gets at the heart of these things uh, that are needful for the body, uh, beginning here with daily bread. As we look at the fourth petition, let's begin by acknowledging that God is the one who gives our daily bread. And it is his free gift to us. Indeed, God is gracious and he gives in one sense indiscriminately. Jesus uh, says so much in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 45. He says, For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. The point is quite simple in this verse here. In his common grace, God sustains his creation irrespective of the eternal state of those who receive uh, his blessing. The elect are not located in one place so that God's sun and rain can be uh, uh, provided for them only. In his goodness, God promised in the Noahic covenant to sustain this creation until his purposes are complete. Importantly here, Jesus is making this point in the context of loving your enemy and praying for those who persecute you. The immediate application of this line, Matthew 5.45, is that God gives us an example of what it looks like to love your enemy. He He sends rain on the just and the unjust. For our purposes, uh, this idea reminds us that there is something greater than simply asking for our daily bread that's going on in this uh, petition. We are asking of our good and heavenly father for our daily bread with a sense of thanksgiving for his provision. Martin Luther puts it this way. God gives indeed without our prayer, even to the wicked, their daily bread. But we pray in this petition that he would make us sensible of his benefits and enable us to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. Now, Paul says something along the same lines in his first letter to Timothy. 1 Timothy 4, 4 and 5, we read, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. Now, continuing, first of all, with this idea of thankfulness, Paul argues here against false teachers who were trying to set limits on what believers could or could not eat. But of course, that issue was handled initially in Acts chapter 10, when Peter was uh, instructed, all things are clean, and then finally in Acts 15 with the decision of the Jerusalem Council. The point then is that we receive our daily bread with thanksgiving and not with fear and trepidation about what we're receiving. And we receive with thanksgiving in light of all of this, because of the gospel. One commentator puts it this way, For believers, the thankful recognition of the truth of the gospel, which renounces all stigma from foods formerly pronounced unclean, gives full assurance. Without a belief in the gospel, a person has no assurance that the dietary laws do not apply. So on the one hand, we eat with thankfulness because God and the gospel has caused us to understand uh, thankfulness in a whole new way through Christ's person and work and what he has done uh, to free us. And related to that, we receive with thankfulness all that God gives to us because everything that God has made for us is good. Now, this, of course, requires common sense in order to be applied rightly. Not all that God has created is to be received as nourishment, for example, nor is all that man has made with what God has created to be received uh, as nourishment either. But the fact remains that God, who is good, has given us good things to sustain us. And so we receive them with thanksgiving and not with scruples. 
But the next question we can ask is, what kinds of things fall under this category of praying for our daily bread? Are we uh, strictly um, uh, restricted to literal bread? Or if we expand it just a little bit, are we restricted to uh, our meal times? Luther, in his uh, normal earthy way, helps us appreciate the expansive nature of what this prayer is. Uh, petition is uh, saying. In his small catechism, he says that this petition, petition is prayed for all that pertains to the nourishment and needs of the body, as drink, food, clothing, shoes, house, land, cattle, money, property, pious wifer, husband, pious children, pious servants, pious and faithful rulers, good government, good seasons, peace, health, education, honor, good friends, trusty neighbors, and the like. In short, Whatever it takes for us to be sustained, we ask God for it, and we do so with thankful hearts. Now, one final matter needs to be addressed here, and it is this. How much do we ask for when we ask for our daily bread? The Shorter Catechism says that we pray for a, quote, competent portion of the good things of this life. Now, that language seems to reflect reflect the wisdom of Proverbs 30, verses 8 and 9. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. This proverb reflects the temptations that both riches and poverty pose to our weak flesh. Riches, on the one hand, can blind us to our dependence on God, but poverty, on the other, can embitter us toward him. Better to seek after that which is in between, so that our hearts might be glad with the good giver for his provision, but not gorged to the point of spiritual blindness. In truth, this means that there is no standard amount of daily bread, though we could uh, say that we certainly pray for something beyond mere subsistence. Whatever it is, we pray for our daily bread in light of Christ's salvation. We never forget that we may pray this petition because of Christ, for he is what makes our daily bread meaningful to us. As one commentator has said, if we, all, if, all, if we have all the food in the world but no Christ, we will ultimately starve. If we have food with Christ, we have all we shall ever need. Because we need both, we daily pray, give us today our daily bread. Now let's move on to a couple of discussion questions. First, where might our daily spiritual nourishment fit in the Lord's Prayer? our daily spiritual nourishment fit in the Lord's Prayer? And second, what do we learn by praying for our daily bread? Let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you do provide richly for us. We pray that we would have hearts that are uh, thankful uh, that we receive uh, what we need from you. We pray for your uh, generosity uh, towards us to uh, abound, that uh, we would um, be able to give glory to you more and more each day as we are thankful uh, for not only uh, our daily needs, uh, but our eternal uh, supply in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it's in his name that we pray these things. Amen.